Today, we're going to talk about the most expensive reel that I've ever purchased, why I purchased it, and how I got to that decision on which reel I wanted to purchase. In a previous video, I shared that I recently purchased this Dobbins Ecstasy 755C, and I was on the hunt for the perfect match or the best match or the, I don't know, looking for a pretty high-end, bougie bait caster rod to pair with this to flip, cast, and fish jigs on this five-power Dobbins Ecstasy. $550 rod, looking for a pretty nice reel to put with this. On my community page, I had a post, got a bunch of feedback. Also in that video, there was a bunch of comments. Got a bunch of feedback from you, the viewers that watched that video, and got some ideas churning. So let's go over to Omni and check out some of those ideas. So starting with casting reels, and then we kind of whittled it down based on my personal preference and the brands I like and the recommendations to Shimano, Luz, and Daiwa. Looking at kind of some of the higher end reels. So we're really not looking at like $99 SLX XTs or, or Fuegos or any of that kind of stuff. We're looking at probably that $300 plus dollar reel. But at the same time, looking at the uh, Stees, Antares, things like that, Maintaining DC, that is a little more than I really want to spend. Definitely less than $500, um, which limits some of these high end reels. So one of the reels that definitely came up was the Maintaining MGL, $440. So that's probably the most expensive reel that I considered. There was a couple requests for the Hypermag Lose, which I also looked at at $319. Definitely considered that. The Zillion, definitely, and the Bantam. Those were kind of the reels that were most talked about. Um, there was a few other votes for like the, the Tatula Elite Pitch Reel flip cast. And actually, I looked at that one, but they were out of stock at Omnia. So that one kind of eliminated that one. In the end, I thought about trying to lose, but I've never used a lose. And if I was going to make my first kind of big three, a $400 real purchase. I didn't want to be with a brand that I wasn't comfortable with. So that kind of left lose off the table for me. But in the future, maybe that is a reel that I check out and we bring to you on the channel and review it um, as we get into these more high-end reels and gear. Looked at the Bantam, interestingly enough. Uh, definitely a nice reel. Comes with a lot of really good things and, and great options. But at almost eight ounces, it's a bit of a tank. And the Dobbins Ecstasy is a very expensive, light, crisp rod. And I just didn't want a reel that was above seven ounces and one that was nearly eight ounces. So kind of checked the Bantam off for this application. But I wouldn't be opposed to getting a Bantam for some other applications with different rods in the future. In, in the end, it really came down to the Metanium MGL versus the Zillion SV. And looking over the specs, there's also the Zillion HD. And for the same reason, I ruled out the Bantam. I ruled out the Zillion ST. It's kind of a tank. It's more heavy duty, maybe on a frog rod or something like that. But it wasn't for this, uh, this particular application. So it really left us with the Metanium MGL or the Zillion SV. Looking over the specs on both these reels, they both have a bunch of advantages. You know, solid frames. They're improved gear systems, their boosted casting systems, cast control. A lot of them have really nice features on both of them. The Metanium comes in at 6.3 ounces, which is really light. It's got some good, good gear ratios and line retrieves. They are in stock at Omnia, which really made that attractive. But also looking at the Zillion SV, a lot of the same features, the boosted SV system, their hyperdrive drive gear, you know, a lot of the same features. You know, it doesn't have the magnesium, but it has the solid aluminum frame. They both have brass gears, uh, more gear options in the Zillion. And it was a bonus that at the time when I purchased this, they were still in stock. So uh, don't blame me if uh, these just went out of stock. Uh, but they do have some options here, especially for your left-handers or if you're looking for a 6.3. All that being said, it really came down to the Metanium versus the Zillion. Now let's open this box right here to see which one I ultimately went with. And as you can see, this one's not actually taped up because I was so excited that I kind of wanted to pick this one up in person. So I made the order at Omnia. I was at in the office and I decided to swing over and pick it up rather than wait on the local carrier. And I didn't want the carrier to lose my my new my new bougie reel. So let's, let's open her up, take a peek. First thing is, the nice thing is these reels being expensive, I could throw a free t-shirt in the cart. So nice, you might see this in future videos, but nice high quality t-shirt. Can't ever have too many good fishing shirts. So we got this uh, as a bonus with the reel. Plus the premium membership, getting some point backs on the reel also helps a lot with Omnia. Well, if you're looking for any of the reels we talked about or any of the gear mentioned, there will be links in the description below that will help you find that at Omnia. All right, little drum roll. All right, we went with the Daiwa. 
Bazillion, SV, TW, G in the XH model, which is the 8.5 to gear ratio. For jig fishing, I wanted something with a little burn, uh, a little fast retrieve so that between pitches we can kind of burn in and get it back out there. A lot of times for this particular rod, I'm not going to be in extremely heavy cover. We're going to be torquing on them. I've got a dock rod for that and things like that. So I felt comfortable going with the 8.5 to 1 in this scenario. Let's get it out of the box and take a look. So the Zillion does come in at 349.99. And that was part of the drive for me for that like couple tenths of an ounce difference between the Metanium and the Zillion with the Zillion being in at 6.7 ounces versus what, 6.4 or 6.3 for the Metanium. I didn't think that. And then just what they had for me for $90, I just felt like this was a little bit better value. But only time will tell. And in the future, we may try a Metanium LGL and bring to you that review on the channel. Maybe we'll have a head-to-head -head battle comparing that, you know, that those two reels in the Shimano versus Daiwa and what really battles best at its weight in that wrist area. Out of the bag, you don't get a lot in this box. You get some instructions, a diagram, and things like that. But it's a good looking box. All right, let's get her out of the bag. So first impression, it's got a click, right? If you guys can hear that, there's the click. So a lot of people talk about the click drag on this. So that might be something that people will get used to. They comment on that. So we have multiple adjustment points on this. We have the, you know, the break that you're used to here. So it should come preset here. You've got the magnetic dial here with a nice satisfying click on that. You can see there the SV boost labeled on the spiel. This is a pretty shallow spool at only holding at like 80 to 100 yards of 8 to 10 pound line. So a pretty shallow spool. Probably not going to put any filler on this. Probably going to just run straight fluorocarbon on this. If we pop it open. Take a look. Not a lot to it. You know, unlike a Shimano, it doesn't have the adjustable brakes. That STV system is all built in. But easy access if you want to get there, add any lube, clean it up, things like that. Very smooth. That new gear system is evident, very smooth in this reel. So your adjustment there it comes with a 0 to 20 dial on it with a very solid click on that. So everything's got kind of a click. And even when the drag, like, so if you're, like, fish is pulling drag, you're going to hear a click, much like a spinning reel. So if you can hear that, like, so you'll know audibly as well as physically when a fish pulls drag on this, which might be interesting for jigs. I imagine most of the time I'm going to have this pretty torqued down for jig fishing. Again, the 8.1 to gear ratio feels really good in hand, but I guess the next thing is let's put it on the ecstasy and see what it looks like and feels like on the ecstasy. All right, there she is, all blinged out. Looks really good. The the colors, the chrome, the silver really look really good with the accents on the uh, the reel and the ecstasy. In hand, feels really good. Nice palmable grip here. Don't have a lot of room to move around here in the basement studio, but overall, at first impressions, I'm really liking how this feels. You can't really see the balance point, but it balances fairly well in hand on where you're going to want to hold that with a couple fingers in the foregrip. If you're a person that likes to hold way back here, it might feel a little tip heavy, uh, but if you at least have a couple fingers in front of the reel, you're going to like the way that feels and, and balances out on here. Very comfortable, no sharp objects, nothing that's really going to rub on your hand uh, from what I can tell. I guess the next thing what we're going to do is we're going to spool this up with some 20 pound Invisix fluorocarbon and we're going to tie on, uh, I bring a handful and tie on some Bass Tech jigs and take it to the lake. That'll be absolutely one of the next videos you see here. So if you want to see that on the water review of the both the Ecstasy and the Zillion SV, then make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss that video. And if you want to see the backstory on why I got the Dobbins Ecstasy and how that came about, make sure you check out this video on the screen right here.